Hello and welcome to Gravit. This tutorial is aimed at introducing you to the functionality of Gravit and giving you the skills to get started with your first design. Beginning in the workplace, I will select create a design, which will move me into the designer. In the next view, I have the option to create a custom design by size, use a predefined size based on type, or use a design template. Today, I'll be creating a Facebook cover image. Firstly, I'll be adding an image I've uploaded earlier through the media button. This image will be used as the background for the entire design. I want to align this image to the top of the canvas and then center it horizontally. To centralize my view, I will now go up to the view drop down menu and select output view. This is one of the views offered in Gravit that simply shows the design as it will be exported. Next, I'll be using a combination of shapes, the clip tool and fills to create a small collage on the right side. I will firstly create a rectangle using the draw tool, which can be found on the toolbar. The shape will roughly be a 500 pixel square, which will be rotated 45 degrees, given a seven pixel border that will be white and aligned to the inside of the shape. Aligning a border can be done just above the coloring options for borders, and I will then place it roughly where I need it. After I have the large shape in place, I will duplicate the large shape using command D and then edit it to be about half the size from the properties panel as a rectangle rather than a square. I will then repeat this process and duplicate the shape another two times and placing all of the shapes in the required position. All of these shapes will have the same rotation and border as one another. To save time, I will skip past this point where I adjust the size and position of these elements and move to the next step. There we go. To complete the collage, I will add my first image. Once again, using a pre-uploaded image within the media tool. The first will be a desk setup for the large square. I will place the image over the top of the square and resize it to be a more suitable size using the size functions on the properties panel. This image will not be rotated and once ready, I will select both the image and the shape and select the clip tool. If the image needs to be moved around underneath, simply double click the shape, which will enable the sub select mode and any movements made will affect the image underneath, not the shape position. This feature showcases the power of non-destructible content. Continuing from here, I will upload three more images for the small rectangles through the media tool and repeat the same process of clipping and altering the position if necessary. All of the images used will be relevant to the position I am trying to portray, which is a business consultant. I will continue to ensure that I place the images roughly over the intended shape and edit that position afterwards using the sub-select mode. Once again, to save time, I will skip past this section and move forward with the design. Here you will now see the collage in its completed state. Following the completion of the clipping, I will add a box in the bottom left using the rectangle draw feature found on the toolbar, which will replicate a profile image of Facebook. I will set the color as a similar one to the background using the fill feature and add a seven pixel white border. Now to add some text to the project. For starters, let's open up the text tool located in the toolbar and create two lots of text with it. The first piece of text will be John Smith, capitalized and will be white. The text I want to use for this is called Fala1 and will be size 50. The second piece of text will be the job title, which is business consultant. This one will also be white. However, using the text type cup rum running at the size of 20 for the subheading. Afterwards, I will duplicate this text once again using the duplicate feature and change its size to 17. This, once duplicated some more, will be used for the email and social media links and will be placed next to the profile picture I created earlier. Next to the text I'm using for the external links, I'll be adding a 30 pixel square. This square will be rotated 45 degrees to continue the diamond trend using the rotation options in the properties panel. Inside this panel, I will add a mail icon, which can be found by going to the media tool selecting icons and searching mail within. Once I find an icon that I like, I can click it and it will appear on my canvas. I'll be altering the size of the mail icon to approximately 12 pixels square and be changing the color to a similar whole color to the background. The process of adding this diamond and icon will be repeating for both Facebook and Instagram. However, I won't bore you with these details. Let's continue ahead. Finally, I'll be adding a logo to the design. For this logo, I'll be keeping things quite simple. I'm going to add a 12 point polygon from the toolbar, 
which will be roughly 65 pixels square, and change the size of the properties panel to 82%. The fill for this polygon will be a radial gradient, which is added through the fill option and will be white inside, leading to a lighter gray outside. Under this polygon, I will draw a rectangle using the draw tool, followed by a path using the pen tool, which will look similar to side-by-side -side triangles. As I draw the shape, I should be paying particular attention to my perpendicular draw, and also that I land the top point in the middle of the rectangle. After I've finished, I can change the width of the pen drawing to the same as the rectangle. I will align these shapes in such a way that looks like the bottom of a ribbon, and select the merge button from the toolbar. To align this compound shape with the other section of the ribbon, I simply select the top, then the bottom using command and align based on selection. Once I place the bottom compound shape into position, I will change its color to a light gray to show depth and add drop shadow to the top polygon for effect, which can be done from the properties panel with the polygon selected. To complete the logo, I will add an icon from the pre-installed icons available at Gravit. This time, I will search for a signature icon with a similar color to the background image and resize it to approximately 35 pixels wide. There you have it. Here is a Facebook cover image that is made using many of the key features that make Gravit so versatile. We at Gravit hope you have found this tutorial useful and hope you tune into the next edition.